Hello there. Uh, I have it in my heart to talk about rejection. Maybe you're in the body of Christ and you have been rejected by a lot of people who claim to be also in the body. You're not alone. And it's something that I think every single believer is going to go through if you're really seeking the Lord. There's a lot of Pharisees out there who claim to know Jesus, who claim to know God, and they're Pharisees. They're a brood of vipers, and they don't actually know him. Scripture talks about many that are going to say, Lord, Lord, let us enter the kingdom of heaven. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. And they say, Lord, Lord, there's many people out there in the churches. I mean, a lot more people that do not know God, who claim to know God, who do not know God, than actually do know the Lord. And you're going to come across them. And they even, they will love bomb you. They will act like they love you and they receive you and... Oh, that you're just, this is just so great. Oh, let, let's connect. Da, 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 da. Nope. And then they'll turn against you when you disagree with them or any kind of conflict happens, which let me tell you, conflict is a natural part of life in this fallen sin nature. There is going to be conflict. A lot of people want to run away from conflict and treat you like you're indispensable and you're trash, but you're not. You're fearfully and wonderfully made, okay? Don't let their lack of willingness to muddle through conflict make you think you're like not worth anything. You're indispensable, okay? You are a part of the body of Christ. And Jesus loves you very much. People's love is not like Jesus' love. People's love is finicky. Shallow, mostly. And wishy-washy. And I tell you, my love has been the same. There is a, a beautiful sister named Margaret that I was recently fellowshipping with. We got connected a few months ago. I was like, oh, I can fellowship. She was like lonely. I'm like, I can fellowship with you every day. And then, dang, I have not been. I have not been. And I got busy with my own life and my own selfish depression, wallowing in my own stuff. And I, I haven't been there for her like, you know, it's like that love I had when I first started fellowshipping with her. We're like, you know, we're up and down in our walk. Sometimes we have joy. Sometimes we're going through really hard things and we're not so full of joy and, and love. And there's things that God has to prune out of us. We all have stinky areas. You see, those that are truly part of the body of Christ, they don't, care. well, they care, but they don't, like, trash you or condemn you for your areas of spiritual poop, as I call it. They will have a love that covers a multitude of sin. They will endeavor to keep the unity in the spirit. They will be peacemakers. They will be merciful. They will uh, lovingly correct you and pray for you and endure with you and be long-suffering and have a desire, a deep desire from the Holy Spirit to keep unity, to keep relationship. Those that are truly in Christ have a love for his word, for following him, and for a relationship. Like, because the Holy Spirit's in us. And we care about what God cares about. Um, a lot of people are quick to reject. A lot of people, whenever there's conflict, they're quick to 
cut ties and run away. And instead, instead of bearing with each other. Sometimes there's like things happening where a person could be abusive and it, it might be a good idea to take a break for a moment. <laughs> I can say I've been there uh, with a person in person. But, you know, you give it a little bit of time, have a little space. The Lord, if he's really working in that person and you, if he's really in you, he's working. And there's going to be a desire to connect again because you love that person. You value them. I think that when people who claim to be part of the body of Christ don't care to reconcile, I wonder if they really are part of the body. I think they're judging with a judgment that God warns against. Here's a scripture on that. Matthew 5.22 says, But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Maybe you're thinking, well, there is a cause. This person is this and that, and they've done this, and then, well, what about a love that covers a multitude of sin? What does that mean to have a lover covers the multitude of sin? For me, my understanding is you're going to love them. You're going to cover that sin and that gross spiritual poop that they have with love. You're going to overlook it. You're going to pray for them. You're going to be long suffering and you're going to let the Lord do his work in them. And he does his work well. He knows how to remove things from people. That are surrendered to him. But you see this part in the scripture that says Raka. I think that means like. I want nothing to do with you. Get away from me. Ugh. What's wrong with you? Like it's a condemning. I. You're not worth anything. You. You're trash. You're. I don't know. Like a. A wrongful judgment we're supposed to judge righteously in Christ but I think there's a condemning judgment that God doesn't want us to have towards each other and I think the scripture talks about that kind of judgment but these are just my thoughts please share yours down in the comment I just looked up Baraka and according to Bible tools it says vain or worthless fellow so you're saying you're worthless um, term of contempt used by Jews in Christ sorry not in Christ in the time of Christ uh, it says the inner feeling of anger to be punished by the local provincial court or anger breaking forth into an expression of scorn. Like, do you feel scornful towards that person? It's like, ugh, get away from me. It's just not right. See, Jesus wants us to be reconciled. Doesn't he say, leave your gift at the altar? And be, go and be reconciled to your brother. Be long-suffering. Be merciful. Have the love that covers the multitude of sins. Scripture says endeavor to keep the unity in the spirit and the bond of peace. Have a love that covers a multitude of sin. But people have heart work that God has to do. And they will reject you. They will see things about you that are not right that have to be worked on by the lord and for me like i've been told things about myself that i don't agree with i don't think are wrong and i won't receive it and 
people reject me because of it. Instead of having love for me that covers a multitude of sin or be long suffering. Um, there's no mercy in that. They too have things that God has to work on. Where is the mercy in casting someone away because you see some sin or some yuckiness inside of them? Where is the love that covers a multitude of sin in that? They're not operating according to the scripture. I want you to know if you've been rejected like that, you're not alone. And your brothers and sisters are suffering the same afflictions all over the world. And you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And God loves you beautifully, perfectly. He loved you even when you, he likes, like, say me. He loved me even when I was doing the most vile things, like stealing from stores and watching the most disgusting, horrible, evil stuff and getting pleasure out of it. I was into rape porno and I liked evil. I liked evil things like that. That was disgusting, but God still loved me at that time, even in my darkness and depravity and evilness, because that's God is love. But he also God is also a God of justice, and if you reject his forgiveness for your sins, you won't be reconciled to God and you will end up in hell. But God died on the cross, so you don't have to go there, so you could be forgiven. And if you put your faith in him, he will save you, not your good works, but his righteousness will be imputed to you and you will be saved by him if you have your faith in him he'll give you that gift of salvation gift cannot earn it but yeah i think god wants us to be reconciled i know god wants us to be reconciled according to the word of god um but a lot of times people are not doing that and they're having a condemning judgment that god does not want us to have and it's really sad. It's really sad. Um, and I know it's hurtful to you. It has been to me. Very, very painful. But God, he is a comforter. And he will uphold your soul. And he will strengthen you in himself. And you have to know his love is perfect and people's love is not people's love are not like God's love people don't always see things right even other fellow believers like they don't always act right they don't always have that tender heartedness that Jesus calls to have they don't always they will reject you sometimes but if they're really in Christ I believe that they will come around and want to be reconciled but there are some that are not of him here's a scripture on that first John 2 19 they went out from us but they were not of us for if they had been of us they would have no doubt have continued with us but they went out that they might be manifest made manifest that they were not all of us some people will leave you because they were never really of him and they don't want to receive him and by you being in their life that's them receiving him because if they receive you they receive him let me find that scripture. Matthew 10 40 says, He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. But some people claim to be of him, but they are opposed to the Holy Spirit and do not know him, and they will leave, and they are not of him. But those who are truly in Christ will ultimately have a desire to reconcile, I do believe. There is a scripture that says, Can to the chemist, can't, let me read it to you. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
starting at verse 15. If the fool shall say, because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body, is therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, and I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? See, like there's different parts of the body. But now hath God set members in every one of them in the body as it pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, neither nor again the hand to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. We need each other in the body of Christ. And God wants his true body to be in relationship, in fellowship, together. We need each other. This world is dark. People that are not in Christ are enemies of the cross. They hate us like they hated Jesus. And his Holy Spirit is in his people. And he wants to move among us through each other and do beautiful things in our soul and strengthen us and edify us and comfort us through one another and help us through one another. But a lot of people are, I think, in error right now and don't want to reconcile. But if you're truly in him, you're going to ultimately want to. Um, you might take a break for a minute, but you're going to want to reconcile. Just wanted to share these thoughts today. I hope it was a blessing to you and hopefully it brought some conviction and you want to fellowship with a brother or sister that you fell out with and work things through. Conflict is hard, but it is part of life. Don't be a coward and run away, but face things, endure with each other, grow in humility and love and be long suffering and recognize the value that your brother and sister have. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.